Okie dokie. Hello and welcome to ECTV. My name is Grace Johnson Glick. We have an interesting show for you today. Starting with a comical interview from Aaron Cornelius of Seth's Games and Anime. Ethan Scott, all the info in the studio. Hello, my name is Ethan Messiker, and today I'm joined by Aaron Cornelius, the store manager at Seth's Games and Anime. Today we will be talking about all things comic. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks, man. How you doing? Good. Good. See, we turned it into a fist bump there. It was good. Yeah, it, I think it worked. Um, okay, so how did you first get into comics? What sure, was your first sure. experience? Well, I have to say that um, uh, it was in kindergarten, mm -hmm. and I was sick. And so my mom took me to the local grocery store, and um, uh, yeah, we were just passing by the magazine rack, and she's like, here, take this one, you know? And it was Batman, and that was the first comic book I ever read. Cool, cool, sweet. What um, what issue? Or uh, what, what was the I specific can't, story? <laughs> I can't remember the, the exact issue number. It was probably like uh, like late '80s, mm -hmm. so um, like right before the the Batman movie was released. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, I remember there like being some sort of menacing hawk on the cover, mm -hmm. and and Batman's cowl was like ripped up in the tree or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Yeah, cool. All right, so um, you work at Seth's Games and Anime. How did you get into that job? How did you kind of follow into where did yeah, um, you know, I just, I love comic books, mm -hmm. so I went there, like, every week, mm -hmm. and finally, <laughs> after a long period of time, they were just like, hey, do you want a job? And so I was like, sure. And so I've been working there for the last 10 years now. That's neat. Yeah. And what's, what's the atmosphere sounds pretty good around there. What's yeah, the atmosphere it's pretty, like? What's it's, it's it like pretty, to work there? You know, it's, really, it's a really nice working atmosphere. Um, I love working with my fellow employees, and, you know, we just want to make sure everyone just has the best time coming mm -hmm. in, getting comics, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Now that we're into comics, um, gotta ask: DC or Marvel? Okay, all right. This is really serious. This now. is this is a very serious question, but I'm gonna have to say both. Uh, both. My the, my again, my very first comic was Batman, so I'm gonna have to say that, that at first the DC comics were definitely what I've read, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy the mythology and uh, behind them. Like, I guess you could say if if you could determine like. Uh, if you look at all of the DC characters and you look at all the Marvel characters, mm -hmm. like DC almost feels like it's like a pantheon, like they're almost you know very mythological and godlike, whereas like the Marvel characters are very um, I don't know more street smart, more like you know like, yeah yeah. And but I, I enjoy both their differences, but you know I mean DC is where where I started definitely. Yeah. But I, I I love Marvel comics; they're fun too. Well, yeah, yeah you know nothing is more grounded than Thor who lives in Asgard. <laughs> yeah. And also a god is yes. interdimensional <laughs> and is a god. So I mean, you put it that way, totally. But then nothing's more. But then nothing's more out there than the Galactus, Batman. Maybe or... than Batman, a guy who just you know is street level. So yeah, yeah I mean, it goes both ways. So um, what's your favorite writers and artists that like you've? Sure. Well, Hel across. Hellboy is my favorite comic book character. Sweet. I really enjoy his comics a lot. And um, yeah, so Mike Mignola is the creator of Hellboy, mm -hmm. uh, both writer and artist, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy his work. I'm also a really big fan of uh, Sandman, uh, Neil Gaiman, mm -hmm. and the millions of artists he worked with on that book. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh, cool. Totally. So um, also, um, I hear you have a podcast that you do. Oh, um, totally. Yeah, you, you guys should go check out uh, Please Don't Send Me Into Outer Space. Cool. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Radio, all those guys, mm -hmm. all those places. Cool. Yeah. And what, what, is your, what is the show, what's the podcast about? What sure. Um, basically, every week we watch a movie and we talk about it. Mm -hmm. Me and my friends, Joel and Sarah. Cool. What kind of movies? Um... Uh, Sci-fi and fantasy related. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where we stick. There is no one particular era. We watch all of them. That's Definitely. cool. All right. So, so um, speaking of DC and Marvel, what do you think about the new current movie trends? Because it feels like oh man, it feels like we've kind of like the the general public has been really reintroduced to something that you know they would m in the past just have like a, more of a passing interest in, but now it really feels like you can't really escape it. You know, we have them on posters everywhere. Yeah, it's and, everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's all in your face. Um, you know, I like it though. Uh, I'm more excited because there's more exposure, uh -huh. like you said. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think Marvel definitely has had a few years on DC, uh -huh. <laughs> so they, they have they, they've definitely got their act together in a lot of ways. But I'm still excited, hesitantly, to see how DC handles it. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting moving forward with the backlash that we've just seen with 
Batman v Superman. Yeah. I mean, it's not really... I, I don't want to say it was a positive one. <laughs> um, what was your opinion on the movie? You know, uh, when I was hearing all kinds of critics talking about how horrible it was, mm -hmm. uh, I was a little afraid, afraid. I mean, me, you know, myself, just like everyone else, when we saw the trailer, I was just kind of like, well, what's going on here? Why are we get, we're getting way too much story. Where's mm -hmm. the mystery, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had very low expectation when I saw the movie. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was, and I think maybe that's why I really enjoyed myself when I saw it. <laughs> I just had such low expectation that when I sat there, I had just had a great time. I felt very yeah. confused because I was so, I was so conflicted because when I was watching it, it felt like for everything I liked in the movie, mm -hmm. there was another thing that like held me back from really just going all the way in. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like um, I feel like you know they're because the, I think it was like a sixty eight percent drop in the the second box office this weekend. So I I wonder how that's gonna gonna affect the DCU uh, moving well, forward. Yeah, I, I know money is definitely a big part of it. You mm -hmm. know, so yeah. so it'll be interesting to see uh, uh, the decisions they make mm -hmm. towards that. I'm still looking forward to Suicide Squad though. I think, I think it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, that so. does. Um, so. Um, Ventura has a comic book convention. Yeah, and I believe definitely. you guys went to. Um, yeah, I think it's C four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your feelings on the whole kind of convention culture? Because that's cool. you know that I mean that seems to kind of help bring awareness also to just kind of like you know a bunch of cool things and absolutely helps keep it in the public eye also, which kind of adds into you know like these movies. It's very synergistic. Absolutely. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, comic book conventions are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that sometimes the San Diego Comic Con loses loses itself in, in movie properties, mm -hmm. and I feel that comics are definitely thrown to the side, which is what I like really like about the local con. Is I mean there is I mean there just isn't much of that big that mm -hmm. that, that big you know movie movie uh, industry stuff going on. I feel that it is practically just the focus on comics, it, it, and and, yeah. and and I think that's what's so great about conventions is just going there, uh, meeting artists writers that you like mm -hmm. and uh, having a chance to tell them your appreciation of comics, man. They actually, um, the the guy, um, the first year that I went, the guy who was writing Teen Titans at the time, oh, cool. he was he was there and he was just signing his Teen Titan books, uh, like, you know, they were single issues, but they, mm -hmm. he was giving them out for free. That's so cool. Um, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> so do you have any, uh, do you have any good, uh, Speaking of that, do you have any good Comic Con stories? Or? Oh, totally! Oh man, I have so many. Um, but what I will say is, is that um, me and uh, my my uh, wife, we, mm -hmm. we both worked at a, a convention booth at San Diego, San Diego Comic Con, and while we were dating, and I had an opportunity to propose to her there, and so it was awesome. That yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks like uh, that's all the time we have for today. And thanks for stopping by. Oh, right? thanks, man. We got it this time. What a fun interview. Now let's join ECTV's Jade Spur for a visual journey through Europe. Well, the architecture was very different each place we went. In um, Switzerland, it was very just kind of old and quaint. A lot of things were like wooden buildings. There weren't as many colors as the other countries, but it was still very colorful. Um, a lot of the buildings were scattered along the mountainside because in Switzerland, there are a lot of hills. My favorite part of my trip was Switzerland and seeing the mountains. Snow is a foreign object to the people in California.
the hotel that we stayed at in Switzerland was actually rather nice. It was an little town called Eggwill, which was basically just a small village that looked basically dead. There was nobody there, but it was pretty. There were great views. Italy was very similar to France, except a lot of the buildings were very close together and they were a lot more colorful. So Cinque Terre is five little uh, villages actually that are not accessible by uh, car. We had to go by train. Um, it took maybe 15 to 20 minutes to go to each city. It wasn't very long. Um, they're right along the coast, so it was a really beautiful site, um, very picturesque and um, it was very colorful. The um, buildings were very close together and it was very unique and how the alleys went all the way through and it was just really fun to be there. In France, we visited two castles. Um, one of them was the old Pope's castle, um, and we got to um, go throughout the castle, and it was really beautiful and picturesque. And then uh, the second one, which we visited the day after, um, had very like confusing hallways, but it was all gorgeous, and the views were incredible, especially from the tops of the towers, the terraces. So we visited a natural reserve. One thing we discovered at the reserve was that it's very windy, so you could lean into the wind and it would support your entire weight. And it was pushing the grass and it made it look like waves and the sand as well. And it was kind of really artistic. In France, a lot of the buildings were old, they were made out of stone, and they were very like picturesque. It was almost as if you were walking through a fairy tale. Um, well, the trip has been really, sorry, I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> The trip has been a really good way for us to make friends because, especially to school like ours, where you don't get to socialize a lot since it's an independent study school, um, you could bond a lot with the other people on the trip. And I've made a lot of new friendships that I'm, I'm really going to treasure. <laughs> Hi, <Nick. laughs> I knew no one coming into this trip, but um, made friends with just about everyone from El Camino. Um, the people were very nice, and really it just took a couple days to make friendships. Um, I made some really good connections with people, and I'm very happy about that and it was a really nice adventure. Wow, what a beautiful piece. We can't wait to see more from Jade. Now let's get back to the studio for Ethan's interview with Cyan about Poetry Out Loud. Hi, I'm Ethan Messiker, and today I'll be interviewing Zyan Reza, who placed second in the State Poetry Out Loud competition. Hi, Zyan. Hi. <laughs> so how did you first get involved in Poetry Out Loud? Um, I first got involved with Poetry Out Loud when I entered high school in ninth grade about three years ago. I was talking to my teacher, Mrs. Hewitt, who was also like the English teacher at El Camino, and uh, she brought Poetry Out Loud to our school, and so she knew a lot about it, and she kind of helped me through the process. And that's how I kind of found out about it, and then how I started getting more involved with it. Okay. And exactly what is it? What Poetry Out Loud is a um, program under the National Endowment for the Arts, and it's basically a poetry recitation competition. It's national, and it's for high schools all across America. 
And basically, there's like four levels. So like the first one is like school level. If you win that, um, you go to county, and then there's state, and then nationals. Okay. And you made it up. How far did you make it? I went to state. Okay. And um, yeah, if you win nationals, it's like uh, a twenty thousand dollars scholarship. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot at stake. Okay. Yeah. And uh, have you always had this passion for poetry, or is this something relatively new with poetry out loud? Um, I think I've always had a passion for creative writing more mm -hmm. than anything, but poetry is like a form of that, and so I think I like the general term creative writing, but um, since I started high school, I think I became more familiar with poetry, and so my general interest started, grow started growing, but um, other than that, I've never really been that interested in poetry up until now, obviously. Okay, yeah, and so you, you made it to the... Um, to Sac up to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, how was that? What was the trip like? <clears throat> Sacramento was so cool. Mm -hmm. It felt like kind of a news, like another state. Mm -hmm. um, but it was so cool because it was such a different um, sort of vibe than like here in like Ventura County. Um, it was so green there. Mm -hmm. um, the buildings were all like super, you know, high tech and like very, very like distinguishable buildings. And so I got to see the state capitol, I got to like perform in there, and um, it was like amazing really. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so what was it like working beside so many other talented people? Um, I think there was like a, competi a competitiveness to it, like there was an edge definitely, but most of the people were really, really friendly, and um, it was nice to get to know people who had, you know, the same kind of passion mm -hmm. um, for the stuff that you do, and um, they were all, like, really talented, so it was really cool to see them perform, because it was al almost like seeing stories, like, come alive on stage, and so that's really cool, like, wherever you are to see. Would yeah. you say you got a lot of pressure from that, and, I mean, how do you, how do you handle that? Um, I think there was a lot of pressure, just because people are so talented and it's like, if you don't see that beforehand, you, see, you definitely see it when you're at the state level. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, you know, a little bit tough at first, but um, I think if you realize that you're there for the same reason and you got to the same place, it's yeah. like easy to kind of overcome that and you realize like why you're there and what you're there to do, obviously. Do, do you think that that kind of pressure elevates your your performance? Um, um, yeah, definitely. I think it adds something to your performance. I think it adds more passion. I think it gives you sort of like a platform to work off of. Um, I think pressure is something that just helps. You know, it can be a little annoying, but it definitely helps in the long run because um, your adrenaline starts growing and you, and you really feel like you have to connect to the poem and it really helps you to connect to the poem in the long run, yeah. Okay. So what, ma what motivated you to get into this competition? Um, I think mostly it was my teacher at first. Um, and then after that, after I got to county, and after I won county, actually, um, I remember there was uh, the, the coach from another school, I think the school that won second place in county. Um, she came up to me and she's like, uh, you better bring back a trophy for Ventura County. And I was like, oh, like, I, I didn't know, like, that's never happened. And she said, yeah, you know, it'd be so cool to see, you know, people from Ventura County representing and, you know, at the state and stuff. And so it was like, that kind of motivated me a lot because when I got there, I kind of remember that. And it was really, like, um, cool to see, like, you know, to see that kind of come to life. And you have, you got second place. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good title. Yeah. Uh, what does it feel like to hold that now? Um, super cool. I think it's it's kind of like the in between between like winning and like mm -hmm. placing mm -hmm. because second place like I know like it says a lot, but also like you see like where you have to go and like where you have to improve, and um, it really was an honor even getting that far because yeah. there were so many talented you know high schoolers and they were all like super just there and they were all super passionate and it was like super cool to kind of like beat the odds there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Zyan, for joining us today and congratulations on uh, all your accomplishments with Poetry Out Loud and best of luck to all your future endeavors.
And now, Zion will read one of the poems she competed in Sacramento with, Frances Harper's Let the Light Enter. Let the Light Enter by Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. The Dying Words of Goethe. Light, more light. The shadows deepen and my life is ebbing low. Throw the windows widely open. Light, more light before I go. Softly let the balmy sunshine play around my dying bed. Ere the dimly lighted valley I with lonely feet must tread. Light, more light, for death is weaving shadows round my waning sight, and I fain would gaze upon him through a stream of earthly light. Not for greater gifts of genius, not for thoughts more grandly bright, all the dying poet whispers is a prayer for light, more light. Heeds he not the gathered laurels fading slowly from his sight, all the poet's aspirations center in that prayer for light. Gracious Savior, when life's daydreams melt and vanish from the sight, may our dim and longing vision then be blessed with light, more light. That's all we have for today's show. Join us next time on ECTV.